When I moved to London in 2015, I rented for about two and a half years in a fantastic flat in East London just by the Olympic Park. And I realized over that time that I had spent over 30,000 pounds on rent. And it was at that moment I realized that I needed to change something and buy my own flat. But it's not that easy. London property prices have an average price tag of 660,000 pounds on average, which is crazy. In this video, I'm going to explain my story of how I bought a 600,000 pound flat at age 25 that now costs me the equivalent of £400 a month. If you're only here for the numbers, I'll give you the top line figures. So I bought the flat for £567,000 on a 40% share on a shared ownership scheme. That means that my share was 227,000. I put in a 40K deposit and that makes up the figures. If you want a deep dive of the figures, then stick around because I'll show you exactly how much the flat cost me down to rent, mortgage and service charges and bills. And I'll also show you how the lodger's room that I rent out also helps pay for part of the flat costs as well and how it all works out to the equivalent of about 400 pounds a month. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Matt. I work for a bank by day. I invest in property on the side. And on this channel, we explore all things money, finance and property investing to help people lead a more financially savvy life. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for loads more property, money and finance related videos. So before we jump into the figures, I'll give you a little bit of a story of how and why I decided to buy a property in London at age 25. So I was renting for about two, two and a half years and I originally came to London because I got a fantastic job on a graduate scheme for one of the UK's biggest banks. So little old northern me moved to London and at 22-ish years old, I then started renting with other people that I worked with in the brand new company and I actually lived there for a good two to two and a half years had a great time and over that period met loads of great people and over the course of that two and a half years I was roughly spending about 750 to 800 pounds a month purely on rent and bills that came with living in a zone two almost central London location. Now, when I added this up over the course of the whole time I was there, that means that I had spent over £30,000 on rent, which is absolutely mind-blowing because that money has gone and can be never recouped ever again. So I just thought, I need to change something and I need to make a bit of a difference here and change the way my finances work. So I actually was investing in tech stocks at that time as well and invested in a few kind of things here and there. And roughly at the start of 2018, this is when Bitcoin went on the huge surge that it did. I stupidly put all my money onto Bitcoin at 6,000. I saw it surge and I should have sold rather than being too greedy and letting it sit and see what happens because I wasn't investing in it for the long term. And what happened is that then all the stocks tanked and tanked and tanked further. And luckily, I pulled my money out just roughly at the same point where I put the money in. I probably lost about one or two thousand pound overall, but that was still a one or two thousand pound loss that I could have spent on something way better. So for the rest of 2018, I put all my money into tech stocks, which is a mixture of the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. And they did really well. I managed to get about 20% overall, plus um, a few more kind of savings overall. So I managed to bump my £30,000 pot into a £40,000 pot and that is what I used to start looking to put a deposit on a brand new flat. Now because I had lived in the East Village um, since I moved to London in the Olympic Park I'd been keeping my eye on a few different developments around the area and saw a brand new block and it looked really really good there was a huge kind of pond and garden area which is beautiful and they were doing a mixture of private sale, private rented and also shared ownership as well and when I looked at the shared ownership figures I actually was a bit of a skeptic to begin with because I thought shared ownership was really expensive for what it is because you have to pay both the mortgage for your share of the property and rent on the share that isn't yours and also if it's a flat you'll be paying service charges as well but when I did the figures on it I realized that I could afford a two bed flat and the whole thinking was that one bed flat for me in London just wasn't financially viable but by having a two bed I could rent the spare room out and then use that money to cover the rent of the share that isn't mine and then the service charge as well. And when you speak to some of the shared housing associations, some of them don't let you have lodgers and some of them do. And luckily the one that I'm with do let me have a lodger and they were fine with that and I asked them at the very start. So I moved into the flat in January 2019 and it has been a great ride so far. I have no regrets whatsoever buying in London. The market has been quite turbulent over the past two years and mainly because of Brexit and then the virus this year that's going around. So it's definitely taken a hit and London had a big boom from about 2015 so I am gutted to miss that because property prices surged about 30 to 40 percent in the course of like three four years which is bonkers so let's deep dive into the numbers themselves and how I bought the property so the property true value when I first bought it 
was £567,000 in total. Now I have a 40% share of that under the government or slash UK shared ownership scheme, which means my share is £227,000, which is more manageable as a mortgage. So then I used a £40,000 deposit on the flat and had a little bit of help from parents just to pay things like legal fees, which I then paid back afterwards once I'd had a chance to recoup some of the money. So um, 227,000 minus the 40K deposit, that means that my mortgage was at the time £187,000, which when you start to break it down, £187,000 as a mortgage in the UK is, is quite, you know, it's quite doable, it's quite small. It's not the smallest mortgage in the world, but it's definitely doable for a 25 year old. The great thing is as well, because I work for a bank by day, I also get a staff rate mortgage, which means I pay 0.1% interest, which is the equivalent of the Bank of England base rate, which means the interest at the moment is about 15 pounds a month, that is tiny. And then the rest of the mortgage is purely paying down the capital. So in terms of monthly outgoings, there are lots of different costs associated with having a house or a flat in the UK. So the first one is the mortgage itself. Now, the mortgage is around 450 pounds a month that I pay directly to the bank. You've then got service charges, which are around £260 a month. Next is the rent on the share that isn't mine. So 60% of the property is not truly owned by me, it's owned by the housing association. So because they obviously don't live in the flat with me, I basically pay a fair market value rent to them for the share that isn't mine, which comes to the equivalent of £760 a month. Bills cost around £260, so that covers things like water, electricity, council tax, all the rest of it. And then we've got content insurance, which is £20 a month. And then I also put away a small amount of money every single month, which is basically my contingency. So this is things like if anything breaks, if anything goes wrong, I need to repair something, or there are just general things you need to buy in and around a house. And that's £150 a month that I put away as a little kind of security blanket as well, just to pay for anything in the property that's unexpected. So if my math is right, the total costs are £1,900 a month for a two bed flat in Zone 2 London. Now, to some that might sound absolutely absurd to spend nearly £2,000 a month on accommodation. And yes, I agree, but it works out financially because I have the spare room and in the spare room I have lodgers who live with me and in the UK there is something called the rent a room scheme where you can either get up to £7,500 a year tax free income or you can do a different method where you then claim expenses like bills and it means that I can claim things like my service charges and the rent against the income that comes in from the room that the lodgers room generates. And in terms of income, the lodgers room brings in about £1,000 a month, which is a very, very good rate for a room in East London where they have their own private bathroom, a balcony, a gym downstairs, and a really nice kind of estate to walk around with a pond and small lakes and stuff like that as well. So that's £1,000 a month. My other half also contributes a bit of money as well. And all in, it costs me about £450 a month, which basically means that I'm paying off my mortgage whereas all the other income in the flat pays off the service charge, the rent, the bills are also covered as well. So it means all of a sudden I'll go from renting in a seven to 800 pound a month place and bringing that down to 450 pound and having my own kind of flat that I can live in and own, which is great. So the last point we should look at is equity within the flat itself. So I've done a little bit of research on this and it looks like the flat has gained around 4% in value over the past year and a half, two years. So that means that the true value of the flat now is around 589,000 pounds. When you convert this into my share, which is 40%, this roughly works out at around 236,000 pound. So I bought the flat for 227, it's now worth 236 and my current outstanding mortgage is around £179,000. So when you do the maths on that, the equity in the property is roughly around £57,000. So that's not bad to say I started with 40, I've now got 57 if I sold the flat tomorrow, and I would definitely love to use that in the future to buy an unloved property and do it up and put in a brand new kitchen, brand new bathroom, and boost the equity of a property. Because one thing I regret doing is buying a brand new build, because the value is already there and there's no value that you can truly add to the property. So that's definitely one thing I've learned by buying this flat in London. In terms of this flat, I definitely wouldn't want to buy it outright and keep it forever. It's great to have a property in London and I'm sure this flat will be worth more than a million in the future, but the money that I would spend trying to staircase this flat in the future would cost well into six figures. Also, I'd have to pay around £18,000 in stamp duty as well, which is ridiculous. So the money that I would have spent on this flat, I can use on property investing up north and then use the current equity in this flat to buy my next residential property. So I hope you found that useful and hopefully this has helped you realize that if you have a pot of money of around 30, 40,000 pounds, then it's definitely possible to buy a flat in the most expensive place in the country. 
if you're outside of London, that means it can only be even easier for you. And as much as I had written off shared ownership to begin with, actually, if you get a two or a three bed and you're happy to rent out a spare room and the housing association are happy for you to uh, get a lodger into the room, then it definitely is worth it for me. And it's been a great start getting onto the property ladder and building equity within a property. So I highly, highly recommend it. I hope you found this useful. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for loads more property videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.